from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 17. Hi, and welcome to the second day of live coverage here of theCUBE covering Google Next 2017. We're at the heart of Silicon Valley here at our 4,500 square foot new studio in Palo Alto. We've got a team of reporters and analysts up in San Francisco checking out everything that's happening in Google. Uh, I was up there for the, the day two keynote and happy to have with me as the first guest of the day, Friend of the Cube, Mark Farley, uh, Vulcancast, a uh, guy that knows clouds, worked for you know one of the big three uh, in the past, and kind of helped me break down some of what's going on in the marketplace. Mark, it's great to see you. Oh, it's really nice to be here, Stu. Thanks for asking me on. Ah, so, I, I, yeah. always, always happy to connect. <laughs> and Mark. what a lot of fun stuff to get into. Oh today. my God, yeah. I mean, yeah. this is you know what what we 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 love. It's uh, you know we talked about um, you know I, I wonder Amazon reinvent is like the Super Bowl uh, <laughs> of the industry. There, you know, what, what's what's Google there if uh, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, Google pulls a lot of resources for this, right? And uh, they, they can put on a very impressive show. So uh, if this is the, uh, if, uh, if Invent is the Super Bowl, then maybe this, maybe next is the college, uh, you know, <laughs> championship game. I mean, it's, you know, I hate to call it college, yeah. but it's, it's that, it's got that kind of draw. It's a, it's a big deal. Yeah, maybe it's, uh, it's like, uh, you know, it's that, uh, is it the, you know, I don't want to say arena football, it, it's the, <laughs> the up and coming. Oh, you know? oh it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot better than that, right? Yeah. I mean, the fact, it, Google really does some spectacular yeah. things, uh, you know, they're, at they're events. Google, come on, we Google. all use Google, we all they're, know Google. They're Google. Uh, and, 10,000 people showed up, there's a lot of excitement. So what, what, what's your take of the show so far and, and Google's positioning in cloud? Uh, well, you know, it's nothing like the introduction of Glass. Yeah. You know, and of course, Google Glass is a thing of the past. But I don't know if you remember when they introduced I, that. I, I do. When uh, they had the skydivers, sky you know, and skydivers diving out of an airplane and then climbing up the outside of the building in Moscone and all that. It was really spectacular. I mean, so it's kind of they. they nobody can will ever reach that mark again. Probably not even the Academy Awards, right? But uh, you know, so. But you asked the second part of the question: What's what's Google positioning the cloud? I mean, I think that's that's going to be the big question moving forward, they are obviously committed to doing it, and they're bringing you know, unique capabilities into cloud that you don't see from either Amazon or Microsoft. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, coming into it, there's certain things that we've been hearing forever about Google, and especially when you talk about Google and the enterprises. Are they serious? Is this just beta? You know, you know, are they going to put the money in? Uh, I thought Eric Schmidt did a real good job yesterday uh, in the close of the keynote, and he's like, look, I've been telling Google to push hard in the enterprise for 17 years. Look, I signed a check for $30 billion. $30 billion. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I talked to some people, they're a little skeptical, and they're like, well, you know, that's not like it all went to build the cloud. Some of it's for their infrastructure. There's acquisitions, there's all these other things, that, you know, but I think it was infrastructure related. But, you know, look, there, there shouldn't be a question that they're serious. And Diane Green said uh, in a Q&A she had with the press, you know, that thing about like, we're going to tinker with something and then kill it, I want to smash that perception uh, um, because mm. there's certain things you can do in the consumer side that you cannot get away with on the enterprise side. And she knows that um, they're putting a lot of effort to transform their support, transform the pricing, you know, dig in with partners and channels. Um, and some of it is, you know, they've gotten the strategy together, they've gotten the pieces together. We're moving things from, you know, beta to GA, uh, and they're making good progress. Um, so, you know, I, I think they, they have, you know, addressed some of the misperceptions. That being said, everybody usually, it's like, oh, well, if I've been hearing this for five years, it's probably going to take me a couple of years to really believe it. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, is for, for people that know Diane Green and have watched, you know, VMware over the years, and then, you know, uh, her being there at Google is, is a real commitment. And, you know, she's talking about commitment. She's, you know, when she talks about that business, you know, it's, it's full pedal to the metal. This is, this is a very serious, uh, it's, it's more, the thing that's interesting about it, it's a lot more than infrastructure as a service, yeah. right? So, and, and I mean, the kinds of uh, APIs and apps and, and everything that they're bringing, this is a lot more than just infrastructure. This is, this is Google, you know, Google developed, Google, if you will, proprietary technology that, you know, that they're turning to the external world to use, and that's, and there's some really sophisticated stuff in there. Yes, so you know. bef before we get into some of the competitive landscape, yeah. you know, some of the things you were pretty impressed with, I think everybody was, uh, the keynote this morning definitely went out much better. Day one keynote, a little rocky, um, didn't hear, you know, the biggest applauses were around some of the, you know, International Women's Day, which is, is great that they yeah. do that, but, you know, 
it, it's nice when they're like, oh, here, here's some cool new tech, or they're like, oh, wow, this this demo uh, that they're doing is, you know, some really cool things and products that people want to get their hands on. So, uh, you know, what jumped out at you with the keynote this morning? Uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. It's the uh, the stuff around. Uh, personal identifiable information yeah, so that, that they're that's doing, the, right? what they call DLP, or the, it's the Data Loss Prevention API. Yeah. Thank goodness for my Evernote here, which I believe runs on Google Cloud, <laughs> uh, keeping up to date, uh, so I, I'm Data I'm loss prevention shouldn't be so hard to yeah. remember, right? Yeah, and, 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 and by the way, you, you even said, uh, you said like, you know, proprietary stuff. One thing about Google is, you know, that data loss prevention, it's an API. They want, want to make it easy to right. get in. A lot of what they do is open source. Um, they feel that that's one of their differentiations is to be, you know, we always used to say, on the infrastructure side, it's like everybody's thumping their chest. Who's more open than everybody else? Google, you know, lots of cool stuff. Everything from the TensorFlow and Kubernetes uh, that's coming out where some of us are like, okay, how will they actually make money on some of this? Will it be services? But yeah, data loss prevention API, which uh, was like a really cool demo. It's like, okay, here's a credit card. The video kind of takes it and it redacts the number. It can redact social security numbers. It's got that kind of machine learning AI with the photo, you know, the the video and uh, you know all those things built in to try to help you know security and encrypt and protect what you're doing. It's mind-boggling, right? Yeah. You think about you know they do the facial recognition, but they're doing content recognition also, right? And and you could have a, a string of numbers there that might not be a phone number, it might not be a social security number, and the question is, you know, would you know would would DLP flag that too? Who knows? It doesn't really matter. What matters is that they can actually do this, right? And, and if you you know as as a storage person, you know, you get involved in you know compliance and risk and mitigation and all these kinds of things, right? And over the years, and and it's hard, it's hard for a uh, it's hard for software to go in and scan a lot of data to just look for you know text, not images of numbers on a photograph, but just text in a document, whether it's a Word file or something, right? And you say, oh, it's not so hard, but when you try to do that at scale, it's really hard at scale. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that I really wonder about DLP. Are they going to be able to do this at large scale? And, and you have to think that, they're, that that is part of the consideration for them because they are large scale. Yeah, I mean, and if they can do that, Stu, that is going to be wildly impressive. Yeah, Mark, everything that Google does tends to be built for scale, yeah. so you would think they could do that. Right, and I think about all the breaches, it was usually, oh, oops, we didn't realize we had this information, didn't know where it was, or yeah. things like that. So if Google can help address that, you know, they're, they're looking at some of those you know, core you know, security issues uh, they talked about uh, they've got a second uh, form uh, uh, factor authentication with a little uh, uh, USB tab that can go into your computer. End-to-end -end encryption if you've got uh, mm. you know Android and Chrome devices. Uh, so a lot of you know good-sounding things on kind of the encryption and security. Yeah, and you know one of the other things they announced. I don't know if this is this is part of the same thinking, right? But they talk about uh, 64 core. Uh, servers and they they talk about uh, or VMs I should say 64 core VMs and they're talking about getting the latest uh, the latest and greatest from Intel what is it Skylink Sky Skylake Skylake yeah thanks yeah. Uh, yeah, they had Regine uh, actually up on stage Regine Skilling uh, Cube alum uh, you know know her well um, was happy to see her up on stage uh, you know sh showing off what they're doing and not only just the chipset but you know. Intel's digging in, uh, doing development on Kubernetes, doing development on TensorFlow to help with uh, really performance, and we've seen Intel do this. They did this with virtualization with the extensions mm -hmm. that they did. They're doing it with containers. You know, Intel gets involved in these software pieces and makes sure that the chipsets can be optimized and you know, great to see them work, working with Google on it. Well, my guess is, yeah. my guess is they're, they're going to be using a lot of cycles for these security things also, right? The security is really hard. It's front and center you know, in, our, in our lives these days and just everything. And and, uh, you know, I, I think Google's making a really interesting play. You know, they, they take their own internal technology, the security technology that they've been using, and they know it's compute heavy. Uh, you know, the, the whole thing about DLP, it's extremely compute heavy to do this stuff. Okay, let's get the biggest, fastest technology we can to make it work, and then, you know, maybe it can all seem seamless. I'm really impressed with, with how they've figured out to take the assets that they have in different places, like from YouTube, you know, these other things that you would think, is, is YouTube really an enterprise app? No, but there's technology in YouTube that you can use for, you know, enterprise cloud services. Uh, very smart, I, I give them a lot of credit for looking, you know, broadly throughout their organization, which in a lot of respects, you know, traditionally has been a consumer-oriented, you know, experience, and they're taking some of these technologies now and making it available to enterprise. It's really, yeah, really hot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, they did a bunch of enhancements on the G Suite product line. Uh, you know, it, it, it's 
I, I felt at times a little bit, it's like, okay, wait, I've got the cloud and I've got the applications. Uh, there are places that they come together, places that, you know, data and security, you know, flow between them, but um, it still feels like a, a couple of different parts uh, and, you know, how, how they put together the portfolio, but, you know, building a whole solution for the enterprise. And, of course, something, you know, we, we see similar things from Microsoft, not as much, uh, you know, from Amazon. You know, what, I'm curious what your take is as to you know how how Google you know stacks up against Microsoft. Who disclaimer oh. you you did work for at, at one time uh, you know on the infrastructure side. Yeah, you know that's yeah. a whole interesting thing. You yeah. know, Google really wants to try to figure out how to get uh, enterprises that run on Microsoft technology you know moving to Google Cloud, and I think it's going to be very tough for them. Um, you know, Satya Nadella and Microsoft are very serious about making a seamless. Uh, a, a seamless experience for end users and administrators and everybody along, you know, uh, managing the systems and using their systems. Okay, uh, can Google replicate that? Maybe on the user side they can, uh, but certainly not on the administration side. And, and you know, there are hooks between the, the land-based technology and the cloud-based technology that Microsoft's been working on for years. The question is, can Google come close to replicating those kinds of things? And on Microsoft's side, do they get enough do, do customers get enough value? Is there enough magic there uh, to make that automation of the hybrid IT experience, you know, valuable to their customers? And I, I just have to think though that that there's no way Google's going to be able to beat Microsoft at hybrid IT for Microsoft apps. Just, I just don't believe it. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. I think what one of the the you know not so secret weapons that Google has there is what they're doing with Kubernetes. So you know they they've gotten Kubernetes in all the public clouds. It's getting into a lot of on-premises environment. Uh, you know everything from we were at uh, the KubeCon conference uh, in Seattle a, a couple of months ago. Uh, I hear DockerCon and OpenStack Summit are going to have you know strong Kubernetes uh, uh, you know discussions uh, there, and it, it's growing. It's it's got a lot of buzz, and you know that kind of you know. Poor Portability and mobility of workload has been something that, especially as, as guys that have storage background, we have a little bit of skepticism because you know physics and you know no. uh, you know the, the size of data and that whole data gravity thing. But that being said, if I can write applications and have uh, you know ways to be able to uh, you know do similar things across multiple environments, uh, you know that that gives Google uh, a way to spread their wings beyond what they can do in their Google Cloud. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious, you know, what what you think about you know containers kubernetes you know serverless uh, you know type activity that they're doing yeah uh, I think I think within the Google Cloud uh, they'll be able to leverage that technology pretty effectively I don't think it's going to be very effective though in uh, in enterprise data centers I think I think you know the OpenStack stuff's been a really hard road and it's it's uh, a long time coming I don't know if it'll ever get there uh, so then you've got a company like Microsoft that is working really hard on the same thing we don't uh, it's not clear to me what Microsoft's orchestrator is going to be, right? But they're going to have one, yeah. right? And, and yeah, so are you bullish of, on like Azure Stack that's coming out later this year? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think Azure Stack's a step in the right direction, and Microsoft ab absolutely has to have it. Not so much for Google, but for AWS to yeah. compete with AWS. And I think it's a good idea, but but it's such a constrained system at this point, right? I mean, it's going to take a while to see what it is. You're going to have, you know, HPE and Lenovo and Cisco, you know, all have and Dell all having the same basic thing, right? And so you ask yourself, what is the motivation for any of these companies to really knock it out of the park when Microsoft is nailing everybody's feet to the floor on what the options are to offer this? And, you know, I understand Microsoft wanted to play it safe and, and saying we want to be able to support this thing, make sure that when customers install it, they don't have problems with it. And, you know, Microsoft always wants to, wants to voice the support burden onto somebody else anyway. We've all been working for Microsoft our whole lives, <laughs> right? And, and it, it was the old Dilbert cartoon and as soon as you open that software, you're all of a sudden, you know, Microsoft's pool boy, you know? Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, uh, so, you know, Azure Stack's, Azure Stack's going to be pretty constrained, and they keep pushing it further out. And so, like, so what's the reality of this, right? Uh, you know, and, and Azure Pack right now is a zombie. Everybody's waiting for Azure Stack, but Azure Stack keeps moving out, and Azure Stack's going to be small and constrained. So, you know, this stuff is hard. 
uh, th there's a reason why it's taking everybody a long time to get it out. There's a reason why OpenStack hasn't had the adoption that people first expected. There's going to be a reason why I think Azure Stack does not have the adoption that Microsoft hoped for either, yeah. right? And uh, it's it's going to be an interesting thing to watch over what uh, you know play out over the next five or six years. Yeah, I mean, for myself, you know, I, I've seen this story play out a few times on the uh, on the infrastructure side. I remember, you know, the original you know precursor to VBlock with Acadia yeah. and the go-to-market uh, VMware when they did the VC and stuff, you know, the generation one of Evo uh, really went nowhere and they had to go, a lot of times it takes, you know, 18 to 24 months to sort out some of those basic, you know, pricing, packaging, partnering, positioning uh, type things. And even though Azure Stack's been coming for a while, how would I say, TP3, TP3 is like, you know, here and we're talking about it and it's going to, you know, GA this summer, but you know, it's it's once we really start getting this customer environment, people start selling it that you know we're going to find out you know what it is and what it isn't. Well, it's, I mean it's interesting, right? You know you know how important that technology is to Microsoft, yeah. and and it's it's in many respects Satya's baby, right? And it's so important to them. And at the same time, you know it's it's not there, it's not coming. You know it's it's going to be constrained. Whew. Yeah, so, yeah. so Mark, uh, you know, unfortunately you and I could talk all day about stuff like this and we've had many times, you know, at conferences that we'll, we'll spend a long time. I want to give you just the, the, the final word, um, you know, just wrap up, you know, the, the intro for today on uh, what, what's happening at Google Next uh, and what's interesting you in the industry. Well, I think the big thing here is that Google, Google is showing that they put their foot down and they're not letting up. Right, it is. They're they're serious about this business. They made this commitment, and you know we we sort of talk and we give uh, lip service a little bit to the big three. Well, we got Azure, we got Amazon, and then there's Google. Right, I I think every year Google does more, and they're they're proving themselves as a more capable cloud service provider. You know, they're showing the the integration with Hana is really interesting. Right, uh, SAP, I should say, not HANA, but SAP. You know, they're going after big applications. They've got big customers. Uh, you know, every year that they do this, it's more of an arrival. And I think, you know, in two years' time, that idea of you know the big three is actually going to be big three. Yeah. It's not going to be two plus one. Yeah. You know, and uh, and that is going to accelerate more of the movement into cloud faster than ever because the options that Google is offering are different than the others. These are all different clouds with different strengths. And uh, of the three of them, Google, uh, I have to say, has the most, if you will, computer science behind it, right? It's not that Microsoft doesn't have it, but Google is going to have a lot more capability in machine learning than I think what you're going to see out of Amazon ever, right? They're just going to take off and run with that. And Microsoft is going to have to figure out how they're going to try to catch up or how they're going to parlay what they have in machine learning. It's not that they haven't made an investment in it, but it's not like Google has made investment in it. Google's been making investment in it over the years to support their consumer applications on, you know, on Google, right? And now that stuff is coming, like I said before, the stuff is coming in the enterprise. It, 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 I think there is a shift now, and you know we sort of wonder: is machine learning going to machine learning going to happen? When it's going to happen? It's going to happen, and it's going to come from Google. All right. Well, great way to end uh, the, the opening segment here. Uh, thank you so much, Mark Farley, for joining us. We've got a full day of coverage here from our 4,500 square foot studio in the heart of Silicon Valley. You're watching the Cube. <laughs>